Welcome to part three of my football manager experiment where I swapped the English Premier League with the conference North and South as well as swapping all the other divisions around as well. Make sure you check out part one and two before watching this so you know what's going on, you know what's happened already. I'll put links in the description below and also in a little annotation in the corner that you can just click on. So part three, <laughs> it's still going. Please leave a like if you're enjoying this. If you want another part then let me know as well by either liking the video, commenting or doing both, perhaps tweeting me as well if, you, if you're really keen for another part four. I'm happy to keep going. I'm just going to do two seasons in this update because the last update had three and it went on a bit longer than I, I thought it would. So we're going to do two again. It means I can go into a bit more detail, perhaps transfers as well. But as you can see, starting with the Vanarama Conference South, West Ham have finally gone up in the playoffs. Charlton won the league though, one point ahead of Watford who just missed out. And QPR, I think, are the only original Premier League team left in the Conference South. I may be wrong, but I think I think that's correct. Uh, so poor old QPR still there. Billericke, Bognor Regis and Dartford going down. Hendon surviving. Dorchester, some other low down teams uh, are doing okay. Let's look at, just have a quick look at transfers can see the top transfers there's still millions of pounds going out of this division um, and QPR actually spent 2.9 million pounds probably because they managed to get a lot of money for much and ailing but you can have a quick look there if you're interested in that sort of thing manager movements QPR losing their manager Danny Wilson they've got Nigel Clough in charge now okay let's go back and go up to the conference north so, league table. Ipswich champions of the Conference North. That is strange that they're in the Conference North. Obviously, they've been relegated and there mustn't have been enough teams. Well, there must have been too many teams in the Conference South. So, Ipswich are in the Conference North. And you don't think of Ipswich as a Northern team at all. Lots of travelling for them this season. West Brom going up in the playoffs. Sunderland still in there and Leicester as well. Stoke still in there as well. They've, they've really suffered, in fact. Uh, Three-star reputation still, OK finances, Mark Cooper's in charge, Ryan Shawcross is still the captain, vice-captain Jack Collison. But they have suffered. Oldham, Fleetwood and Corby being relegated out of the conference. Scunthorpe and Hereford just about surviving. Top scorer is Jamie Vardy, along with Chris O'Grady. He seems to be doing well. He's had a good career down there, in fact. Lots of goals, apart from that season. But he's, he's been scoring plenty of goals lately. Have a look at transfers as well. Because I, I didn't look at the transfers low down in the last episode. Patrick Van Anhalt going from Sunderland to Whitehawk. Rat Rodwell leaving Sunderland as well. Some big money. Well, relatively big money. Very big money for the conference north and south anyway. Manager movements. Let's have a look quickly. If it lets me click on it. There we go. So who's in charge? We've got Steve Bruce in charge of Sheffield Wednesday. Neil Adams in charge of West Brom there. Kenny Jacket has left Wolves. Up to the Conference North then, let's let's go. So, the, oh not Conference North, the, the Conference Premier. Palace winning the league, 107 points. Southampton is still stuck there. They've been unlucky nearly every season since going up to the Conference Premier. Fulham beating them in the playoff final. Let's look at some of the goal scorers. Jordan Rhodes for Fulham and Michael Carrick as well. He must be ancient now. 38 years old. And Giroud scoring for Southampton. The, the, oh, it is brilliant. All the players, all the teams are muddled up. All the managers are muddled up. It's fantastic. Everton missing out on the playoffs as well. And Rotherham as well. Going down to the Conference North and South. Port Vale, Dover, Preston and Boston United. Jordan Rhodes top scorer. James MacArthur most assists. Let's have a look at transfers. Seven million. Nathaniel Klein eventually leaving Southampton to go to Arsenal. Tom Ince going from Norwich to Sutton United for big money as well. Manager movements. We've seen Phil Parkinson has left Everton. Steve Bruce left Hull. Let's go up to League Two, the Football League. Oh, where are we? Here we go. Profile. Up to the Football League. League Two. Oh, interesting. Liverpool winning the league, Villa going up as well with Northampton in the 
awesome asset playoffs, but Worcester going up in the playoffs, beating the likes of Basingstoke, Solihull, Motors and Bradford PA. There's lots of the original teams, well, the teams that we put into sort of the Premiership and the Championship that have been relegated this far now, that have, I mean, it's full of those sort of teams. Although Chelmsford and Hednesford have been relegated. Oh, Chelmsford, what's happened to you? I wanted you to do well. But it hasn't worked out for you, has it? Sad times. But Liverpool and Villa, the two Premier League teams in there, as you'd expect, getting promoted quite comfortably, along with Northampton as well. Balotelli, top scorer with 36 goals, still at Liverpool, probably still in the Italian team. He's got quite a few caps anyway. Um, also, Luis Alberto, top assists, Spanish guy. Joe Ward playing very well again this season. Transfers, let's have a look. Ebbs Fleet signing Harry Wilson. Three Villa players leaving. The top signings there, but one going down to QPR, which is very strange. Manager movements. No one major there. That's a Graham Alexander was Hartley Pool manager. Steve Cottrell now in charge of Newport County. This is fascinating, isn't it? I hope you're finding it fascinating. Some of you probably will probably get a bit bored now. Probably won't want me to do any more. Parts, but if you do want me to keep going I'm really happy to keep going because it really is quite interesting and we're only up to 2020 so I'm happy to keep going I'd rather be a bit more in detail though do longer videos in detail less seasons and then more videos just so we can get through them and um, just just have more detail for you to look at really so Wilfred Bonney top scorer for Newcastle here uh, in the league one Man City champions are ahead of Newcastle Farnborough going up in the playoffs so the two Premier League teams going up again, as you'd expect, and they will eventually all get there, I presume. Some won't, but the big ones you'd expect to keep going up. Man City's reputation, of course, is really low for some reason. Vincent Kompany still there as captain, and Chris Hewton still in charge of Man City. Newcastle, on the other hand, have Alan Knight in charge. Jan Matt is their captain. They've been promoted three seasons in a row now. Once you get out of that bottom division, the teams are likely to keep going. In fact, once you get out of the conference, because there's two going up, you are always likely to stay in that pair and keep going up with each other. Friends, they can hold hands as they go up the league. So transfer-wise, Nastasic going to Arsenal, 4.6 million. That was the biggest transfer. Let's have a look at manager movement. Any interesting names here that I... Dave Jones, Sheffield United. Rio Ferdinand being sacked as Alfredton manager, but he's now in charge of Tranmere Rovers. <laughs> Graham Alexander in charge of Stevenage. Liam Ridgewell in charge of Sheffield United. Fascinating stuff. Where are we? Let's go to the championship now. So as you'd expect, May United and Tottenham going up together to the Premier League as they've followed each other since the conference. 109 points for Man United and Tottenham with 99. Eric Lamella, top scorer. Mitrovic, bit of a, an FM legend. Doing very well for Man United as well. I wonder how much they signed him for. 21 million. Spending that much in the championship this season. Crazy money. One matters still there. He's had a very good season every single season. As you'd expect in these lower leagues. Oxford City also going up. Ahead of Portsmouth, Halifax and Gosport via the playoffs. Wickham, Eastley and Burton were relegated. So that's interesting in itself. Burton, a, a traditional league club from the last few years, getting relegated ahead of some of these lower down, traditional lower down teams, sort of non-league teams. But yeah, look at those last past winners of the championship. Portsmouth, South End United, Chelsea, then Men United. Great stuff, really great stuff. So transfer-wise, top transfers. Man United spent a hell of a lot of money to get up. They didn't really need to, I don't think, but they, they spent it anyway. Let's look at their transfer history. So they spent 53.3 million in the championship. Crazy money at that level, of course. Zinedine Zidane is still in charge. Who else came in? Well, Ben Davies left Tottenham for AS Monaco for 7.5 million. Tottenham brought in Cameron Burgess from Aberdeen for 2.7 million. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of regens around now, so perhaps it will start to get less interesting. But players like you know, Henry Lansbury going from going to Portsmouth, he's 29 now. 
but they've still got a few years left in them, a lot of these real life players. Manager movements then. Alan Pardew being sacked as manager of Colwyn Bay now has no club. Gareth Ainsworth in charge of Wickham. Uh, Ian Holloway in charge of North Ferriby. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, finally, Premier League. Chelsea are champions once again and Arsenal second but only six points ahead of Whitehawk. So unfortunately those two teams will be missing out on the Champions League now because Chelsea, there's only two places, but Chelsea and Arsenal back and winning the league. You'd, I think most of you are probably thinking, oh, I wish it would taken them longer to get back. I wish when they did get back, they just failed because they, they were now below the likes of Whitehall. But unfortunately, they've been promoted every single season. And then as, in fact, they finished oh, they, they fourth place in the conference. They got promoted by the playoffs. So they could easily have missed out then and it could have delayed their progress. But first, four out of the five seasons and that is just I don't know I was they haven't signed anyone in fact but I was just hoping that they would actually struggle obviously our Chelsea fans out there wouldn't think wouldn't want that but I was really just hoping that it would that Whitehawk or one of these teams would progress enough to win the league ahead of Chelsea and Arsenal but unfortunately that hasn't happened Arsenal second place as well but like I said only six points ahead of Whitehawk so the, the gap isn't as big their reputation is only two and a half stars now that has really plummeted some teams have really suffered and others haven't it's very interesting Andy Watson in charge I mean they're still playing at the Emirates 60,000 seater but I wonder if they're getting that many fans now because obviously there's less people I mean, they, they, that was 60,000 against Sutton United, so they, they've all come back. I don't know whether they were getting that in their lower divisions. Let's have a quick look. So the likes of three seasons ago at home against Oxford. 50, so they were still getting big crowds. Fair play to the Arsenal fans for still turning up. 50,000, that one, though, against Mansfield. But it had, didn't plummet dramatically. I suppose they were still playing big players. So top scorer was... Jordi Hawulu for Barrow and average rating wise Oscar Hazard Derrida Ramsey McEachran top assists 18 let's have a look at the England team then whilst we're at it main squad here we go so club wise we've got Hyde a high goalkeeper Jason Steele I think we saw that last time Will Hughes is at Hayes and Yedding how much did he move for 7.75 million three years ago. Diego Poye is at Wildstone. Tom Ince at Sutton United. Deli Alley and Nick Powell still at Whitehawk. Theo Walcott's at Hyde. Moving for free from Arsenal up to the Premier League. And that's fascinating stuff. Oh, let's look at the. I mean, they're still, you know, in the top 10 in the world. They haven't really suffered. World Cup won by Italy, 2-0 against Algeria in the final. Very strange, that. Transfer-wise, biggest signing was going from Sutton United to Arsenal for 15 million. Leo from Atletico to Whitehawk. Nathaniel Klein to Arsenal as well. But Chelsea, like I said, didn't spend any money and they still won the league, which is <laughs> unusual for them, of course. South End getting relegated. Barrow and Chorley. So South End, one of the, the first league teams to get into the Premier League from sort of league yeah from where did they start league one can't remember really but league two possibly but they've actually got relegated from the premier league now Let's look at the fa cup then fa cup this year was won by chelsea they've won the double at least so far beating cambridge in the final 2-1 unfortunate for cambridge there let's go down to the capital one cup which was won by arsenal 2-1 against wickham They've won it twice, in fact, now. Brackley won it last year. But those two teams dominating. But Hyde did win the Community Shield against Arsenal. Johnson's Paint Trophy was won by Aston Villa 2-1 against Newcastle. And the, the uh, FA Trophy, as this should say, was won 2-1 by Watford against Crystal Palace. Champions League, then. Let's see how our guys did in probably their last season for a while. The likes of Whitehawk. Won by Leverkusen this year, 2-1 against AC Milan. 
the group stage. Let's have a look what happened to the English teams. I don't know how many English teams automatically get into the group stage now. We'll have a look. Probably only one. Yep, only one team automatically in the group stage now. England has really suffered. Hyde just about missing out on qualifying. That is that is unfortunate because it would have been nice to see them, a team qualifying, perhaps help the reputation of the country. But it hasn't worked out that way. Napoli winning the UEFA Europa League. English teams, Arsenal. But well, it's Arsenal going through, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> You'd expect that. Hayes and Yedin going through as well. We'll have to go and look at the knockout rounds now. Whitehawk missing out. Brackley qualifying as well. This is fantastic progress from those teams. It's taken a few years, but they've finally managed to progress. Let's look at the first knockout round then. The English teams. Brackley lost against Ajax. Arsenal went through and Hayes and Yedding went out. Let's just see how Arsenal did. Second knockout round. Arsenal lost against Real Madrid, so you'd expect that, I guess. Anyway, we'll holiday one more year, and that will be the 2020-2021 season. So here we are. Like I said, please leave a like and let me know if you want me to do a part four. This is part three, isn't it? I'm getting confused. <laughs> this, all these numbers and everything all over the screen just uh, really fries your brain. Anyway. The Conference South was won by Watford and Bournemouth went up in the playoffs ahead of QPR missing out by one point on being automatically promoted. That is unfortunate. Welling, Tombridge and Weymouth going down. Top scorer Alberto Tenchoni. Verhagen was top assists for QPR. Harry Maguire top average rating for QPR but it wasn't good enough. Adrian in goal for QPR getting the most clean sheets but still didn't get promoted. Transfer-wise, have a quick look this time. Uh, biggest fee, Alan Arkinson leaving Watford for Hemel Hempstead. Manager movements, Eddie Howe leaving, has gone into Brighton now. Simon Grayson's in charge of Swindon. Conference North. Sheffield Wednesday going up, 109 points. And Stoke going up in the playoffs as well, who actually were the lowest ranked Premier League team last season. But this time round, Sunderland, Burnley struggling. Leicester still haven't gone up either. So there's still three Premier League teams in the Conference North. Um, and there's one in the Conference South now, I think. Birmingham going down from the Conference North. Is that the first? Recent? I think they went down and they went back up again, didn't they? And now they've gone down again. And Southport and this team... Skilmersdale also going down. Marola top scorer for Leicester. Drinkwater top average rating. And Kieran Lee most assists. Transfer wise, the top one was Knockhart going from Sunderland to Torquay for 6.75 million. Uh, manager wise, see Billy Davies in charge of Knox County now. Paul Jewell in charge of Sunderland. He's been moving around a lot. Steve McLaren in charge of Wolves now. And let's go up. I mean, the competition reputation's actually dropped, but you'd have thought it would go up in a way because of the big teams in there. But maybe it went up at one point and went back down again. The, the Barclays Premier League is down to eighth now, three and a half stars. It may have gone up. You may have noticed it going up and then down. I don't know. Oh, that's 2015. It's gone down. But that doesn't make much sense to me because I thought it would go up simply because you've got some bigger teams in there. But I guess their reputation has gone down as well, similarly. Although Leicester's still three stars. And Arsenal, we saw, with two and a half stars in the Premier League. That That is really weird. That has just been messed up. Let's go up to the conference. So Everton champions finally, oh, going, yeah, they win the conference for a while. Finally going up one point ahead of West Ham, who just missed out. Nottingham Forest winning the playoff final against Charlton on penalties. So West Ham and West Brom stuck there. So it actually means, is that the first time we haven't seen two Premier League teams going up from the conference? I might be right. But Nottingham Forest have gone up. We can see West Ham, West Brom and Southampton. Who else? I think those are the three Premier League teams still there. Chelmsford surviving this year. They haven't been relegated again. Cardiff, Hull, Coventry and Hednesford going down. Hull, what's happened to them? They were the one, one of the first teams to go up. And have got stuck. And gone down again. One star reputation. We saw them get promoted. And they won the FA Cup, I think. 
and since then have just drifted and finally got relegated with Dean Saunders in charge and Michael Dawson as captain. Top scorer Brown and DA for Southampton, End of Valencia still at West Ham you can see there, and Creswell, James McCarthy still at Everton, Leighton Baines still at Everton as well, Chris Cohen still at Nottingham Forest. Transfers, Jake Clark Salter, top transfer. Robbie Brady going from Forest to South End. South End spread in lots of money in the championship trying to get promoted, I guess. We'll see if they manage to. But look at the competition reputation of this one. Went from 101st and then suddenly plummeted down to 108th. Okay, let's go up to, to League 2. League 2 champions. Crystal Palace again getting promoted along with Fulham. Uh, oh yeah, in fact Fulham went up last year rather than a Premier League team as well. So it's not just going to be Premier League teams making it back up to the top. There's some sort of current championship team, real life ch championship teams getting promoted as well. Macclesfield going up automatically and Solihull Motors in the playoffs. Kidderminster and Oldershot going down. Jordan Rhodes top scorer 37 goals. Being unbelievable. Sigurdsson as well playing for Fulham. When did he move there? Only a couple seasons ago on a free from Swansea. James McArthur, most assists again. Uh, Mark Albright in there as well. Transfer wise, Stevie May leaving for 3.9 million to South End. They have spent a lot of money. We'll have to look at them in detail in a minute. Lots of tr manager movements as well for you to look at. Okay, let's let's go up to League One and see. What happened? Liverpool and Aston Villa quite predictably getting promoted automatically. St Albans winning the playoffs though ahead of Sheffield United, Northampton and Tranmere. Just like real life, Sheffield United are stuck in League One. Wickham, Grimsby, Lincoln and Forest Green going down. Top scorer Jack Marriott and Troy Deeney. Henderson top average racing, Henderson top assists as well. Transfer wise. Ah, Nikolai Angelov going from Ludogorets to Liverpool, 5.25 million. And manager-wise, and he, oh look, Darren Ferguson left Aston Villa. In came Gary Monk. So, despite them getting promoted, they they changed their manager. Championship. Oh, Man City and Gosport going up. Newcastle missing out in the playoffs. That's not, that is. So there's only going to be three. No, wait, how many teams are in the Premier League now that were originally? It's going to be five next season. Instead of six, you'd have thought Newcastle would get promoted, but no, Gosport, South End missed out quite... Well, that is, that's a bit of a shock, considering they spent quite a bit of money, I think. They spent 23.15, but they did sell quite a few players as well. But still, missing out, despite spending lots of money. Frank Sinclair in charge of South End. Now, oh, these are the uh, South End transfers. Let's go back to the Championship. So Man City, as you'd expect, top. But Joel Porter was top scorer for Gosport, a regen. Worth quite a bit by the looks of it. And wow, <laughs> the reputation once again has dropped from the championship as well. Transfer-wise. So Christoph Carrera going from Young Boys to Man City, big fee. Man City signing Stanku as well. Did they spend a lot of money to get promoted? Let's have a quick look. Chris Hewton still in charge. Not as much as Man United spent last season. Still got Vincent Company in charge. Must have. Must be old. 35, over 100 caps for Belgium. Looks very good still, despite his age. And manager wise, surely, maybe Man City. Uh, not Man City. Newcastle getting rid of their manager. Let's have a look. Manager movements. Yep, Alan Knight leaving Newcastle. In comes Mark Robbins. Darren Ferguson in charge of Chorley now. Interesting. Matthew Upton in charge of Staines. Interesting. Okay, Premier League. Arsenal won it this year. Chelsea all the way down in fifth. Wow. Man United finishing below Whitehawk. So that's good. Whitehawk back in the Champions League. There's a bit of a mix of teams now. Obviously, we've seen Whitehawk, Hayes and Yedding in Wallstone. Sutton United have done reasonably well as well. And Ebbsfleet, Cambridge. Although, in fact, Boreham Wood, Brackley High, they've all been in the Champions League, Europa, Europa League as well. So there's been a, a good mix, although Whitehawk, Hayes and Yedding usually towards the top. And Wallstone. If you see the last few years, I mean, Hayes and Yedding won it the first year. Whitehawk, Whitehawk, Sutton United, High. So five different teams there. No, four different teams, sorry there. Uh, which is good, good for the Premier League. But then Chelsea and Arsenal, 
back. Arsenal winning the league for the first time in years. The top scorer as well, Lorenzo Louis, Arsenal. And a French regen who looks insane. Uh, Aaron Ramsey, top assist. He must be 30 now. Yeah, 90 caps for Wales. Still looks very good. Eden Hazard still at Chelsea as well at the age of 30. Lots and lots of caps for Belgium. Looks incredible. Oxford City FC filed and lower stuff going down. But it's good to see Whitehawk up there. Wolfstone and Sutton United making the Europa League as well, along with Chelsea. Hayes and Yedin missing out, I guess, because these must be cup competitions, possibly. But it's strange that they've missed out. Maybe maybe money issues, who knows. But they've got secure finances. Whitehawk must still be ripped, surely. Not only secure now, three and a half star reputation. Man United up to, uh, uh, they've dropped to four. Arsenal back up to three and a half all of a sudden. And Chelsea, perhaps they've suffered financially this season, no. Four-star reputation, Marino still in charge. Spent more money this year than it spent anything last year, but not enough to get them into the top two Champions League places. Manager movements, Tottenham lost Pochettino. Oh, where, where were Tottenham? Tottenham down in 13th, so they've suffered. They haven't managed to regain their place in the Premier League top 10, as you'd probably expect. So yeah, there you go. Let's move on to the FA Cup. The FA Cup was won by Arsenal, second time against Chelsea in the final. Goal scorers, names I don't really know. Courtois having a poor game in a cup final again. I'm sure, we've seen that before. Ah, this is good. Capital One Cup final, Sutton United two, Lower Stoft one. Let's have a look at some of those goal scorers. Lower Stoft obviously getting relegated. They've got Yaya Sanogo. Ah, that's great. Community Shield. Chelsea beat Arsenal 3-1. Johnson's Paint Trophy. Crystal Palace won on extra time against Tramere Rovers. A mix of teams winning it, but generally Premier League teams since... Well, in fact, Premier League team every single season since 2017. Let's go down. This is the FA Trophy. West Ham won it this time against Charlton 3-1. That's revenge for a previous final. And I think I think that's it. It's only the UEFA Champions League to focus on now. And the other one. Real Madrid went in the final this time against Leverkusen. They've got two finals in a row. Group stage. I think there's only one team automatically getting into the group stage. Now from England. But let's just check. Chelsea went in their group. So I think they're the only... Oh no, Arsenal was world qualifying anyway for their group. But didn't get through... Their group of Madrid and Inter. Let's see how far Chelsea managed to go. Maybe this was a distraction for them because they won this as well against Rubin. Quarter final, they lost against Leverkusen. So the Euro Cup was won by Metal. Oh, Whitehawk in the final! Wow, I'm getting far too excited about this. That is, that was just far too excitable, Paul. Calm down. <laughs> but yeah, Metalist beating them 2-0. But oh, that's fantastic for Whitehawk. I'm screenshotting that. <laughs> okay, let's go down to the group stage to see how... We'll go to the tree view, in fact, and see if any of our other teams were in the knockout round. Whitehawk, it's a bit harder to see, isn't it? Cambridge winning in theirs. Okay, let's see. Let's go back in time. Where did Cambridge get to? Cambridge got to this stage. They lost against Napoli 5-4 on aggregate. What a game that was. Fantastic stuff. So, uh, only thing to look at now, I think, is the England team. Let's have a look. England. Mancini's still there, still in charge. Tenth in the world now. Obviously, World Cup year next year. Let's look at the main squad. Hyde still of Jason Still. Brackley have a goalkeeper, Danny Salmon, who's a regen. So obviously some of these youth academies for these other teams will be improving, I guess. Let's see if he started at Brackley. No, he started at MK Dons. But I'm sure some of, the, some of these teams would have been wise to invest their money in youth academy players. Two Celtic players there, interestingly. And look at all those defensive players. All the way down to there. And then you've only just got the attacking players there. That's really weird. Corley Woodrow for Wildstone. Uh, Adam Hutchinson for Ebbsfleet, Josh Murphy for Hyde, 
Very interesting indeed. The top players, Raheem Sterling, who plays for Atletico. The Ox, PSG, John Stones, Arsenal. The big players are still at the big teams, generally. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, please leave a like for my uh, excitement at Whitehawk making it to a Europa League final. And I shall maybe see you in another part if you want me to do so. Uh, yeah. I, I probably will. If this gets sort of 100 likes, then I'll probably do another one. If it doesn't, then I may do one anyway. But we'll see. <laughs> um, I'll see you soon in a, another video. Either way, I hope.